Hello everyone, I am Dr. Minakshi Jain, Director Internal Medicine at Max Hospital Patpadganj. So today we will be talking about one of the common diseases which is very prevalent in India and all over the world. This is malaria. We all know that malaria is a mosquito born illness and it is one of the major causes of fever. Malaria is an age old disease. It has been happening for centuries together and still it poses a challenge for patients as well as for the doctors. In India, there are lakhs and lakhs of people who suffer from malaria every year and about 15 to 20,000 people die from malaria every year in India. Malaria is a fever which is caused by a protozoa known as plasmodium. So this plasmodium which spreads malaria is of actually four to five types which causes malaria transmission in humans. This could be plasmodium falciparum which is a deadly malaria which is very often seen in Africa and sub-Saharan region. Then there is plasmodium vivax which is more common in Indian and South Asian subcontinent. Then there is plasmodium malaria and then there is plasmodium ovale. Now this is the organism which causes malaria. But then how does it spread? It spreads from one person to another person through the bite of a mosquito. This mosquito is female Anopheles mosquito. Malaria is a high grade fever with chills and rigors. This is classically told and everybody knows that malaria is a fever with lot of shivering. Malaria is an intermittent fever with spikes alternate day or every third day. That's why it is known as sometimes a tertian malaria or a quartan malaria. So unlike other viral fever which lasts for 5 to 7 days, this kind of malaria fever can last even for months together. And there are people who are in tropics or subtropical region. In those people, the malaria is like, it's a part of their uh, illnesses and people have for months together and this is known as chronic malaria. The prevention of malaria is very simple, prevent mosquito bite. Now the question is how to prevent mosquito bites because mosquitoes are breeding enormously in tropical and subtropical area and particularly in India. The most important thing is that the mosquitoes should not be allowed to breed. So killing larva at their early stages, one thing, not allowing water to get collected, another thing and preventing our body by wearing mosquito repellent patches or uh, using full sleeves clothes etc are important to prevent mosquito bites. Malaria spreads from one human being to another human being only through the bite of female Anopheles mosquito. Like in viral fever, like in other fever, it is not, it does not spread by coughing, sneezing, touching each other or through food and water or through urine or through sexual contact. So it is only through the bite of mosquito. Another way where uh, by which it can get transmitted is if you one takes an infected blood like blood transfusion has been done and the blood was infected with malaria, it gets transmitted to the other person. A simple test like a finger prick sample and making a smear out of it can detect malaria. This is known as thin and thick smear for malarial parasite. If we spread the blood on the slide and put the slide under microscope, we can actually visualize red blood cell which are containing plasmodium or a malarial parasites. There are some rapid diagnostic tests which are available which are other than the peripheral smear examination. These rapid diagnostic tests or malaria kit tests they are available everywhere, even the primary health centers which are located in remote periphery of India can do these kit tests and the smear examination. So the card method is one of the common tests, then smear examination basic test, then the other tests which are DNA amplification test, 
these are very sophisticated tests and not available everywhere. Along with this, most of the time with malaria, we do get anemia because malaria destroys our RBCs. So we get low hemoglobin. Secondly, we may get jaundice because RBC gets destroyed. So jaundice comes in. Treatment of simple malaria lasts classically for three to five days. For malaria, which is complicated, the treatment may last for a week's duration. And for prevention of relapse of malaria, the treatment is classically for 14 days. There are now cases of malaria which are becoming resistant to the basic drug which we've been prescribing for malaria for centuries together. So for a simple malaria, it is generally the simple drug which are given and areas where there is resistance to the basic drug for malaria, we give a combination of the higher end medicine and we generally prefer to give not only single medicine for treatment of malaria, but two or three medication. So what happens is we are able to kill those blood uh, plasmodium with the medication. But what about the liver and spleen? In the process, the liver increases in size, the spleen increases in size, and we have got to target these plasmodium or these uh, parasite at the liver and spleen level as well. So there is a course of anti-malarial which is given for at least 14 days to prevent relapses from this malaria. Also where resistance to basic drugs is very high, particularly in areas where uh, the falciparum malaria is more like northeast region of India, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh. In those, in those areas, instead of using first line antimalarials, we have to resolve to second line antimalarials and a combination of antimalarials. And if the patient is losing consciousness, is getting black water fever, or is vomiting or is dehydrated, then one has to admit the patient and treat him with intravenous antimalarial medications. Malaria is a common yet can be a complicated illness. It can affect not on your, only your blood, but your liver, your spleen, your kidneys, your brain. So beware of mosquito bite. Mosquito bite can result in a life-threatening infection. So be cautious, stay healthy, and take care of your life.